you know, if you're going to sell it, then tell me, you know, an anecdotal, anecdotal stories are great when you're, you know, on Shark Tank and when you're telling your mom so she's proud <laughs> or your girlfriend. A <laughs> oh boy, whatever. Um, but you didn't tell me shit. You think it's a hard concept for someone to say, oh man, college kids want shit delivered. Who would have thunk? What, what do they need to have, Mark? What do you need? I mean, when you were You need to pitch, tell me something. You need to tell me where's something. Where's your right? traction? Where's your customers? Okay, where's so, your successes? You know, number of customers. You, you open to multiple markets, right? Great, right? What are your sales? that you put in your pocket? What are your margins, right? You know, how much, what's your break even? What, do you, what does it take to open up another market? How, why are you gonna keep on opening up the market? There's, there's apps where you just hit one button on an app and it orders pizza automatically. But how much are you looking for? Uh, we're currently in the middle of a round for $100,000 at a 10%. So 100. I mean, that's not horrible, yeah. so. Um, but I mean, what have you done? We yeah. can tell you that right now. Yeah, yeah so we launched, we launched the USC last September, um, and in the, first, in the first semester we did over $22,000 in, in GMV. Um, we've since launched two more campuses and have launched this semester um, and are at about... Okay, let's start there. $22,000 in gross margin dollars. Yeah, I'll merchandising value. $100,000 gross, mer gross, gross merchandise value? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so now you're feeding me bullshit fucking numbers. Okay. <laughs> good, good. So what? How, so how much? Keeping out of it. Wait. How, how much? How much did you make from the? But so twenty yes gross no? margin value means that's the total value of all the products you sold, right? right? So I just did it. Hundred thousand dollars for five percent, right? No. 10%. No. They offered ten percent. No, 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 no. I said. He only wants five. Ten. No. No. no 10. You took less than what they offered. Yes. Oh, you're crazy. We have a deal. No, oh. <laughs> this is like working with Barbara. Here, it's like working here, with Barbara. Here's the most important lesson you'll ever get. When you get yes, shut up yeah, and good. leave. Envoy. Because there's like, like one part. <laughs> you know the, the, the other 5% has to go back to your thing. Okay, 100%. So, 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 wait, 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 wait. Because I want to be clear that the other 5% has to go to USC Business School. <laughs> All right, he says like, the other 5% is going to USC Business School. We'll figure something out. Right. We will figure something out. Envoy. Good luck, guys. Good luck. I, I'm not, Do you understand what gross margin value means? I, I, I yeah. <laughs> okay, Barbara. All right, guys. That, that, that. I like it. Okay. Sure, let's do another one. Guys, guys, this, this is not a question and answer session. Just hold up. Oh, someone tried to. Guys, one second. Stage. Shh. No, no, no. That was, that was awesome. That was awesome. Let's do another one. I, I, you want no, one no, more no. talent trail. Let's go, go real quick. That was a good idea. Last one, talent, one talent trail. Now I would really like, I would really like, guys, quiet down. I would really like to bat third right now, seeing what just happened, right? So no long stories. No, my grandmother needed this. This is about traction, success. What have you done? What have you done? Let's go, talent trail. Stand to the side. Awesome. Cool, all right. So talent trails automating career services using data. Wait, wait, I can't understand a word you're saying. Slow Sorry. down. <laughs> Too excited here. Sorry. <laughs> All right. <laughs> talent trails automating career services using data. So what we want to do is help students throughout the career process from 16 to 26 understand exactly what they need to do, the skills they need to learn, the resources they need to get, the internships they need to have, so that they can land their first job. So here's what we've built so far. We launched an internship matching site. We built an algorithm with the co-founder and chief scientist of eHarmony, and we put together this matching platform. We work with companies like Tinder, Secret, Acorns, and of course, Cyberdust, um, and we make it really easy. So this research-backed research -backed matching algorithm helps us find really good candidates across the nation, but also sort and rank all the candidates. So instead of a recruiter having to travel everywhere and have to spend hundreds and thousands of dollars on finding a good candidate, we make it super easy, super quick, painless. And on the student side, if you're a quality student, we'll actually funnel you different positions. So as a student, if you're good, you don't have to spend all of your time searching for positions, we'll find you really good companies to work for. So we have thousands of students across the nation from Harvard, Stanford, MIT, um, you, know, you name it, all on our platform. So how do you source your data? Yeah, 
so good question. So Thank everything's you. stored in. Our <laughs> uh, <laughs> So everything's stored in our database right now. We use SPSS to analyze all of the data. Um, we look for correlations, both in terms of what people have done before. That's not what I asked. Sure. I didn't say where you stored your data, or how you searched your data, sure. or how you ran your analysis of mm -hmm. it. I asked how you source your data. Okay, got it. So students apply. When they go through the application process, we have a proprietary survey that okay. we developed with That's them. That's on one side, right? Yep. That's the easy side. Right. Right, because yep. anybody who wants an internship, there's always going to be a lot of, of candidates. Bam, you just fill it out. Right. The hard part, mm -hmm. obviously, is sourcing the internships. Right. Right. You know, what are, do they pay or do they not pay? Where are they at? You know, right. are they legit or yep. you know nonsense? So how do you source all those? Absolutely. So on, uh, getting the internships on our site is that the question? Getting yeah. How are you sourcing the internships? Got it. Got it. So we currently we started off with direct sales. We actually went straight to companies that we thought would be interesting that students would love and give students an amazing experience, and we went there. Then we started partnering with VC funds. So VC funds will actually start giving us internships at the companies that they funded. Good. Okay, so what's the number? So now the challenge is scale, mm -hmm. right? So you, you're going to have, it's almost like applying to colleges now. That right. part becomes easy, right? Absolutely. Right? And so you're going to have an unlimited of, of, of applicants, right? Mm -hmm. So how long have you guys been in business? So we launched more officially about two months ago. Two months ago. Yep. Okay. How many internships have you been able to acquire so far? So we publicly have about 70 available, but we have over 200 companies on a wait list because we're testing in tiers and releasing them in tiers. Okay. No, I like it, mm -hmm. right? It's very comparable to a company I have called Hourly Nerd, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Where they take graduates, um, MBA um, graduates from six of the top schools, right. and people come in and offer projects mm -hmm. that the MBAs then bid on to work on a project basis. Right. So you can stay at home, don't have to get a consulting job or whatever. So it's very comparable. Right. Good. Right. Absolutely. So what's your pain point? Um, the pain point we're solving or the pain point that we have right now? The pain point you have right now. So a couple things. Um, I think the, the biggest thing that we want to prove out is our growth model. Um, there are a lot of companies You're in which? this growth model. Okay. So we've tested a lot of things and we have students and we're at a point where if we have a cool company, students are going to come on. Um, but we definitely need to scale at a faster pace. This is a market that is pretty crowded, to be honest. There are a lot of companies out there that are trying to you know, help companies solve that problem. Okay, so then how do you, who's the biggest and how do you differentiate yourself? Absolutely. Um, so we have a very low cost of acquisition for students and much lower than what typical companies in our space have. Um, the other side is selling on companies. Most companies hire a huge sales team. So that, that's what most companies have been doing. We so think you're saying you've got well-funded competitors mm -hmm. that are out there going to the same people you're going to. Basically. In a sense. We, we, yeah, because you're yeah. hitting some, they, have, they haven't gotten full reach yet. Right. Right. So you've got your niche of people here yep. on the West Coast, exactly. you know, LA-based and San yep. Francisco-based VCs right. that you've developed relationships with. They might have one in New York, sure. one in Dallas, wherever, right? Mm -hmm. And so what, what do you need, what is your secret sauce that makes you different? So the minute you guys um, go head to head yeah. at a potential um, a company that's offering internships, sure. what's your selling pitch versus them? Absolutely. So we play with the data side very heavily. Most of these companies are job boards. And at heart, they are a job board. You go on, you look at positions, and great, right? We are thinking of things as far as pipelines. So being able to group students in new ways, not just grouping by colleges, which is how recruiters think about it now, thinking USC, Harvard. We want to group it based on skills, based on resources, based on heuristics that they already look at when they're hiring. And, and what other data are you capturing about your students other than the basic you yeah. know, resume type stuff? Totally. Um, so and, we, how are, and how are you going to track, are you going to track them through the, the process to know whether or not there's a success factor? Totally. Um, so. To answer your first question, um, personality is one element that we actually track. The co-founder of e Harmony is really good at that. He's one of the psychometric leaders in the industry. So he helps us understand like team. So uh, through a series of questions that we developed, we can understand how well someone develops in a small team, whether they like a bigger team. And that is a new team dynamic element. So it's a dating app, dating app for internships. Right? In a sense, you could think about it that way. Um, and the whole goal is to help cultural fit, right? That's one element that I think in this space hasn't been touched almost at all. Culture fit. Yes, you're, no, exactly. I think that's critical. Okay. Um, so that's one. So you're developing point, your yeah. own analysis, your own heuristics exactly. in terms of trying exactly. to define not only on the student end, but also on the company end, so they'll have more successful internships, mm -hmm. so they'll come back to you. Yep. And what's the revenue model? How do you charge? Yeah, so we started off charging companies on a monthly basis by launching these listings for them and basically telling them, you don't have to worry about looking for interns. We'll take care of it for you. Um, the feedback that we've gotten, so companies were willing to pay for that. The feedback we got was, this is a competitive space, so remove every piece of friction you can. 
So stop charging companies and get as many people on and okay. build that community. So that's what we've been doing. Okay. And how much have you got? You bootstrapped the whole thing, and how much so, have you? Uh, so USD actually has been tremendously generous. Um, we've gotten about 20k in just grants, awards. Um, and that's been amazing for us. So thank you so much, USC, Dave, all of, you know everyone. Um, because that's literally been and what do you got, and, and so what do you need to get to the next level right now? Yeah, so we're starting to put together a 250k round and the goal is so as a sort of a disclaimer We're going full-time on this to really start scaling this out and really compete in this industry um, So we're starting to look at this in terms of how do we grow to the numbers that all of our competitors are starting to look at? How do we move faster? How do we use the data? So R&D and marketing are the two big areas that we're spending Got it. Um, well, I'll get you my email but when it's all said and done, and yep. we'll exchange some ideas, and we'll see if we're interested. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Uh -huh. It's here Thanks. for Talent Trail. <laughs> so so that, that, was a, that was better than some question and answers. That We don't get... Guys, we're at USC. Let's quiet down, please. So it's rare that you get two guys like this here. Uh, Mark just stopped in. He's actually got to run, but I want to thank him. He's one of my favorite stories, one of my favorite entrepreneurs, and a guy who just does anything for USC. Please thank Mark Burnett. Mark. Hey, good to see you, Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for coming out. I want to make You won't. But... <laughs> so, to put me in touch with those guys, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just glad to tell you Mark Burnett. Thank you. All right, here's what we're going to do in our remaining time. Anybody who wants to, to, uh, to ask a question through CyberDust, do it. We're going to bring up uh, the co-founder of CyberDust and the CEO to answer some questions. Right. Uh, bring up Ryan Azonian. Ryan is yeah, an Ryan. alumnus of USC. Where is he, Ryan? Let's go. Let's hear it for him. All right, Ryan. You, you better. I know you're. I know you're good with pitches. What is CyberDust, and why is it different? And why does why does every student across America have to have this app? Whoa. Okay. Right. What is CyberDust, and why is it different? Um, first of all, the way we store messages is not anything like Snapchat. Uh, nothing hits a hard drive. Nothing's ever saved on your device. Nothing's stored on our servers. It's all stored in random access memory, and once it disappears, it's actually gone forever. Um, a lot of people like to make the Snapchat comparison, but on a security level, it actually can't be recovered. Correct? Correct. <laughs> yeah, I would, I, well, trend, tech or otherwise, are you now, mo okay, so here's the first question. Let's get, when we get into the questions, you'll start to see how CyberDust works, so it's a little bit easier. So first question comes from Laz uh, Alberto, okay, USC Trojan, shocking. Um, spine track. What trend, tech, or otherwise, are you most interested in right now? Sensors, personalized medicine, um, really uh, machine vision, machine learning. As, as processors become faster and faster and faster, and we're able to process more information quickly, and we're able to acquire information from everything around us, then I think we're going to get into a period where information is delivered to us as opposed to us having to go get it. Right now, when you want something, historically you might, you'd look it up on Google, right? Tell me more about machine learning, but, or tell me what the weather is. But I think over time, and more and more so, like you saw one of the pitches, sensors will tell us everything that's going on around us. Sensors will tell us what's happening. They'll tell us the weather, and it'll be delivered to us. And one of the things that CyberDust does, it can take sources and allow you to follow those sources and deliver it to you. And so on CyberDust, now that you've followed me at Ask Mark USC, I can say, I can do what's known as a blast, which is almost like a tweet, but it's private, and say, here's a, here's a video, and say... Make sure it's appropriate. Yeah, no chance. <laughs> I'm turning around. Cyberdust is different because now you can follow me. Play it on. <laughs> and you can ask me questions and I'll answer them. Because it's private, I can answer them privately. See, what's happening now in social media in particular is that, let me blast it out, make public, plus send. Okay. What's happening now in social media, are many people here on Twitter? Yeah, everybody. Well, every, no, is everybody, seriously, not every, you know, in college, not everybody is. Who's on Twitter? 
Yeah. He's not on Twitter. All right. So because what's happening on Twitter now is before you post anything, you have to you keep the lights up. I'd rather see. I'm curious because I'll ask more questions. When you post something on Twitter now, what do you have to do? You have to think twice. How am I going to get slammed? How am I going to get trolled about this, right? And so that changes the conversation. When Twitter first came out, it was a social network. You could talk to people. You could meet people. Now you have to watch everything that you say. On cy that's what CyberDust cures in terms of one-to-many communications and one-to-one -one communications. So now you can ask me a question just like the one I answered from Alberto. Um, and I can give you an answer and not worry about what anybody else thinks. If you post something to my timeline on Twitter, I have to think, okay, who's going to crush me? You know, how many Mav sucks am I going to get? How many Shark Tanks suck? How many you uglies? You know, how many, you know, your mama uglies am I going to get? You know, <laughs> that's, what, that's what public social media has become. Now I can take another que question from Kelsey O'Neill. Um, if you could shadow one person for a day in business, who would it be and why? Warren Buffett, because the guy is smart. He's got, he works hard to know and keep information. What, what I love about Warren Buffett is he's always learning. And there's nothing spectacular about who he is. Um, there's a lot of spectacular things about what he's done. But he knows that in order to make successful investments today, he's always learning. And that's how he stays ahead. That's what I try to do. I try to stay ahead. That's what Cyberdust is about. Now you can communicate with me. And I, here I'm, I'm broadcasting it, but I'll give you a personal answer. We have people that we call chatters and others that are public that are you know, entrepreneurs, that are celebrities, that are business people. And literally, we have college kids that will follow you know, people who are in their fields of interest and just ask them questions. If I'm looking for a job, what should I watch out for? Or I'm starting this company, can you give me advice? And they'll answer you. Yep. And what's happened is we've developed this unique community of people who exchange information. And because it's private, because after you read a message, it's gone forever, that privacy engenders honesty and openness, and that's what made the cyber, has made the cyberdust community big. And, and just want me to interject, you know, all these things you see happening with him jumping on things and responding, like it's, it's, it's not a show. Yeah. So we, we heard about Aaron Levy at Box who sent him a cold email, right, one about, another ago. one of them, he got $150,000 investment. The guy who started, the guy who started um, Uber. Travis, Travis sent me his first company, his last company was when I invested with him, cold, cold email. email. Now, I said no to Uber. I tried to negotiate <laughs> on Uber. I have the best email from him. Uh, it, he sent me an email from Uber Cab, had just started, hadn't really done anything. I said, you're going to get crushed by all the taxi cab companies. You know, I don't like your valuation. Let's talk about it. Someone offered him like seven times the valuation. I never heard back from Travis. So that was the one that got away. <laughs> but Ryan, Ryan, how did, did, when you connected with Mark, you never even spoke with him, you never met with him before he funded the company, right? No, but the main point there is I had already acted and built something. Would you agree? Yeah. I mean, I wrote him a three-sentence email that said, yeah. who's here I am, who's here I am, or here's who I am, right. here's what I've built, and here's how many people use it already. And he said, tell me more. And I told him more, and with, in what, eight minutes, you said, yeah. I'm in. <laughs> And I mean, I made quick decisions. Thank you, ma'am. You know, if, if, has anybody ever heard of the um, the documentary documentary Enron, the smartest guys in the room? Sure. Yeah. That was the first movie I ever produced, right? I got an email from Alex Gibney, the director, and he said, "I got this unique and exclusive video from Enron. I want to do a documentary." I sent him back an email. I said, "That's cool. You know, tell me what more. Tell me more." He sent me one right back, and I'm like, "Okay, how much is it going to cost?" He said, seven hundred seventy thousand dollars." I said, "Done." And so in 12 minutes, I greenlit this movie, Enron, the Smartest Guys in the Room, which went on to be nominated for an Academy Award. And I'm thinking, this movie shit's easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You always win the, win the first one. Right. But now, giving, giving your email out is crazy, right? I used to do it all the time. Not anymore. Giving out your phone number is ridiculous. It's not safe, right? So you can give out your Snapchat ID. Okay, that's something. But you give, away, you give out your Cyberdust ID. And you exchange messages with someone you just met, someone you're thinking about doing business, it's safe. It's, it's much safer. Not every, you know, on Snapchat, if you try to have a chat, they keep everything, right? It doesn't disappear. You can save anything that you chat with anybody, and it stays on, on Snapchat servers. With us, let me, let me put it a different way. When you text, when you email, when you send a snap, when you send, you know, even an Instagram picture, the minute you hit send, you lose ownership of that picture or text or video. But you don't lose responsibility. 
Somebody, how many of you have had texts that you sent a year, two years, five years ago, come back just to a friend, you know, that they embarrassed you with or they posted somewhere, they put on Facebook, you know, or someone that you used to date and called Schmoopy, right, and they <laughs> kept all of them. The point being that you guys are just starting your lives, you're just getting out there, whether it's business, your personal, or going for a job. Your digital footprint has got to start shrinking. You may not think, oh, I never do anything bad, I never, you know, I have a daughter, 11-year-old daughter, and I know there's going to be some dumbass kid, you know, like I was, that she sends a, a message to that says, I love you. Now, it could be for finding his iPad, for saving his dog, it could be for anything. But when she hits send on that message, it loses all context, all context. That's why you want to shrink your digital footprint. That's why, you know, you guys have heard, uh, heard about the Sony hack, yeah. right? So Mark Burnett sold the, the, a lot of the rights to distribute so, um, Shark Tank to Sony. They sent me an email saying, okay, it's time to negotiate your deal. I'm like, I'm not, you guys are full of shit. I'm not doing this on email. This is before the hack came out. I'm not doing this email. I'm only going to do it on Cyberdust. So we negotiated our entire, my entire Shark Tank deal on Cyberdust while they were being hacked and didn't know it. Nothing happened. I negotiated my deal, didn't know anything. Everything was fine. You know the rest of the story with Sony. It matters. Everything that you do now is going to be interpreted by somebody when you look for a job, when you in, make an investment or get an investment, and things that you know, you write today are going to show up 10, you know, the guy from Snapchat, his old listservs from his fraternities came out. Yep. If you don't think about shrinking your digital footprint and think it doesn't matter, it is going to catch up with you and Cyberdust is a great way to do it. It's a great way to connect people. So let me get a couple more questions. Johnny Waffles, great name. <laughs> how are you going to make money? What's the bill? Okay. How are you going to make money? How are, this is, it sounds like a rap song. Okay. Um, Next one. L last uh, one. Last one. Yeah, Jory did that. Bond. I'm a USC freshman and I'm working on a healthcare startup. I would love to be able to give you a brief phone call or email. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> you just downloaded an app where you have a way to send Contact me a message. <laughs> and you want me to phone call you or email you. <laughs> eh, you didn't figure it out. If you can't figure that out, you're out. Um, sorry. Um, is start, there, get a, is get there a, a new limit account, to how, write them again. Get a new account, write them again. Yeah. Is there a limit the right to way. how many companies you will invest in in the future? No. So if any of you guys have an idea, now you know how to reach me. Shocking, right? And it brings up one more point, just as a general observation, something you guys should take going forward. People, what are the keys to success? A couple things. One, the easiest way to be successful is find something you love to do and be great at it. Because when you're great at something, it's, things get really, really easy. You know, I've, I've realized that I got to be really, really good at business, really good at tech, and I made it easy when I started a company. That's one. Number two, let's say you can't get there. Be prepared. Understand, put yourselves in the shoes of the people or the businesses that you're working with. The message that I just got on Cyberdust is a perfect example. If he would have put himself in my shoes, it would be obvious that Cyberdust is important to me, I'm trying to push everybody to message using it. I volunteered and Dave mentioned that, hey, I'm going to be answering questions long after this is over from you people, from everybody sending me messages. So Cyberdust is obviously important to me. And so if you're able to do something that reflects something that's important to me or whoever it is that you're working or trying to get a job with or trying to get an internship with or trying to get an investment from, if you can put yourself in their shoes and put yourself in context of what's important to them, your chances of being successful increase 99%, a thousandfold, right? And one other point I'll leave with you, right? If you're working for somebody, the best way to be successful is by reducing the stress of those around you. It's not about you. I mean, it's always about me, but that's a different point. But <laughs> it's not about you. It's about the people around you. If you're reducing the stress of the people around you. Those are the people, those people start to gravitate towards you. They want to work with you because you make going to work easier, more pleasant. You help them accomplish their goals. You help put them in a position to succeed by reducing their stress. So if you remember those three things and plus some of the other things we said today, selling, et cetera, you will be successful. 
then you just got to go out and do the work. So, great advice. Great advice. All right, we got. We actually have a couple students that we want to come up. Can Corliss and uh, Nicola come up for a little bit of a presentation? Are you guys out there, Corliss and Nicola? I, I can see Nicola. He's a tall guy. Hi, Mark. Hi. It's on. It was on. On behalf of all the students here at USC, thank you so much for being here. Welcome to the Trojan family. Thank you. And we hope to see you again. I hope so. Thank you. (laughs) I got a big head. There you go. There you you go. go. Get a a picture. Hello, Mark. Uh, On behalf of the basketball team, USC Athletics, and uh, all students of USC, we would like you to have and wear this uh, USC basketball jersey. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Get in there and take a picture. Get in there and take a picture. Go take a picture. Appreciate okay, man. Get there with this. There you go. There you go. That is awesome. Cool. All right. Thanks, guys. Congratulations, man. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And, and lastly, lastly, before we go home, we wanted to invite up... Uh, uh, our benefactor and the person after whom the Greif Center was named, please welcome Lloyd Greif. Lloyd! Come on up here, Mark. Oh, damn. So that cap you're wearing, uh, that, that's a non-3D version. This is a 3D version of our logo. Oh. You'll see it up top as well. This red dot is the entrepreneur. That's you. That's standing apart from the crowd, marching That's the beat cool. of his own drummer. I'm here to uh, congratulate you on being named the 2015 Entrepreneur of the Year for the uh, Lloyd Grife Center for Entrepreneurial Studies. And I want to say, <laughs> let's hear it. Thank you. Thank you. There's nothing, we, there's nothing we treasure more than a serial entrepreneur, and that's the gentleman that's in my presence right now. He has done it time and time again, and you know he'll do it again, and you'll be, you'll be watching him as he does it. And the other thing is, of course, we're talking about an uh, angel investor you know, for the ages, and what we do at the Greif Center is what he's doing on Shark Tank and what he's doing in life, which is fostering entrepreneurship, encouraging entrepreneurship, inspiring entrepreneurship, and backing entrepreneurship. So give it up for Mark Cuban. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank One more. You. One more. You. I want to bring up I want to bring up Helena Ilirenko, who's the director Helena. of the Entrepreneur Program. Left Thank hand. You. Non-skiing accident. All right. One more. One yeah. more time. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. That's awesome. Oh, no, thank you very much. Good luck. Good luck to the entrepreneurs. Good luck to the Mavs, Mark. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Let's hear it one more time. USC. Mark Cuban. Mark. <laughs>